Hey everyone, welcome back to Ned Plays Chrono Trigger. We last left off where the the old man in the end of time told us to come here t to learn how to hatch the Chrono Trigger egg. <laughs> and one interesting question was, if you were to name Chrono something different at the end of the beginning of the game, uh, would that change the name of the Chrono Trigger? Like one of the, it was, uh, if you named him Herp Derp, if the item would be called the Herp Derp Trigger. It, <laughs> Though, even though that would be kind of cool, that's it would still be called the Chrono Trigger. On Death Peak, you'll find the power to restore life. But to activate this power, de the deceased must be important to the space-time continuum. And you must have a clone identical to that person. Only then can a Chrono Trigger work its magic. Need a clone? The magician Nolstein Beckler could whip up one in the wink of an eye. Beckler loves festivals. Find a festival, and there too you shall find Beckler. Now you could have done this at the beginning of the game if you wanted to, if you collected enough silver points. Uh, it's going to be at the fair in the present time. Uh, you would have Chrono do a kind of a mini game, and if you win it, you get his clone. And then we're just going to go to the present because that's where it's going to be at. <sighs> so, so I'm so happy right now because I maybe will be have another video, and I'm done with my finals for the semester. So, oh yeah. Now here you go. Now here, since you can't, how the sideshow works or the the game works. If I had Chrono in my party, and I would have done the game, then a clone of me would have came out, and I would have to uh, do a, a little game to to win the clone. This is the same for Marley, Luca, and all the other party members. Now, to get the fastest silver points, because you do need silver points to still do this, is to fight this guy. This is Luca's uh, battle bot. Uh, it takes about, I think, about three. Every time you beat him, he gives you 15 points. So I already have enough points, but I'm just showing you how easy it is, especially at this level. You should just take one hit from anyone, even from Marley or Luca. Yeah. And it only takes about three or four fights to get enough points to do the mini game. Because when you go in the little hut, he lets you choose three different ones. But he's gonna let you choose it automatically this time. But I should have like 90 something points now. Yeah, 105. Welcome to Norstein Beckler's lab. The spine tingling show is about to start. So, you want a chrono clone? Normally I'll never do this, but today I'll make an exception. Challenge me and I'll give you a clone. The longer you stay in the game, the lower my price will be. Now at this point, even if you were to fail when the game starts, you have enough money to buy it anyway. He, or he ex doesn't even give you a chance yes or no, he just takes the amount that he wants to. I think the highest he takes would be about 10,000 but hopefully I could get it down to a uh, more reasonable uh, price or actually get it for free if you make it all the way to the end now every time the, the clone does something like if you lift his left arm you gotta hit the L to lift up your left arm and forward and forward and at first it's slow and then it gets progressively faster and it's kind of kind of hard but let's see if I can make it the first try Alright, he's laughing, left arm. And it's just gonna get worse and worse. at Chrono's house. And I'll, since I beat the game, uh, that little mini game, I'd have to pay anything other than silver points to get it. 
And now you'd go to Cronut's house to pick up the, the clone, because you need it. Oh, hello. Is Chrono okay? Yeah. Just fine. I hope he's behaving. Tell him to be good, alright? Um, listen, I, um, I mean... Yes, dear. We'd like to borrow this doll for a bit. Go right ahead, dear. Stay out of trouble now. And now with that, we can head back to uh, Belthazar or his or the new that has Belthazar's thoughts into it. Now, if you were to do that game with everyone else, like Luca or Marley, if you were to win it with Luca, her clone will appear in her her house. Uh, the other clones don't really have a, a purpose other than just to say you have them, to be honest. On Death Peak, you will find the power to restore life. But to activate this power, the deceased must be important to the space-time continuum, and you must have a clone identical to that person. Only then can a Chrono Trigger work its magic. Enough. The time has come for you to attempt Death Peak. It's the only chance you have of reviving your friend. The last program I have implemented in this creature's memory banks will help you up the mountain. Stand back. The three entities you saw will help you climb Death Peak. This ends my message. Now I must ask you for a favor. This creature has executed his program. Please let him sleep. The switch is on his stomach. Then if you talk to him now. This creature sleeps beyond the flow of time. Uh, letting him sleep or... Not letting him sleep or letting him sleep doesn't change anything, but it's just kind of nice to do for him. He's already helped you all he can. Now this is the mountain we, mountain we couldn't climb earlier. Walk when the wind dies and hide behind the trees when it blows. I see, so you gotta watch out for that. Now what I gotta do is you gotta run up to the tree, and then once you're behind the tree, just let go of the run button, and you should be able to walk in place if I don't mess up again. I'm trying too hard. Here, one more time. That should be good enough. Right there. And there's only one more tree, so it's not really difficult here. From my experience, you don't have to be exactly behind it. I know you can show, like, you can hang off the left or right side. And then you just make it to the top from here. Now, I chose this group because uh, Luca and uh, Marley, they have a good... The Antipode 3 is a great weapon, and also I chose Robo because he has good physical attacks as well as he has he's our, my secondary healer. Uh, Robo or Frog would be good to fill up with the, on the last slot of the group. And the only fights that are really tough here would be the Lava Spawns, but with Antipode 3 and Robo's Uzi Punch they shouldn't be too hard. And a magic ring, that's just the accessory that adds plus six to your magic. I didn't think there was anything up here. And you can avoid fights if you're fast enough. I didn't think I would make that one. A lot of these creatures are pretty weak. Oh, 
should be able to finish this one. I say they're not hard and they, they kill me. That's because I, I think I'm just thinking too hard on these guys. I should have just used Flare. I'm trying to conserve mana right now. Alright, and then these guys, you could avoid them if you're fast enough. It's actually best if you try to go around them. Here. You're gonna go down there anywhere later, so don't bother with it right now. And you wanna hug this wall over here because there is a fight you can avoid here. And this is the first lava spawn. He has two things you can attack. You can attack either his head or the shell. You never wanna attack the shell because you're not gonna do any damage to it anyway. And when any attack hits the shell, he counterattacks with the strongest attack that hits all of you. So, what I usually like to do is have all three of these. All three of my members, whoever I have in my party, I do a do an attack that concentrates on the head, and then follow up with Antipode three, because that should be enough to kill him. But it's just surviving the first barrage of attacks is kind of tricky. I'm gonna have her do fire. And this is the attack that hurts. Right now, if I was to do Ice 2, it would hit the, of course, the shell in the head, and then the shell would counter-attack with its strong attack. Now, that should be enough where if I do Antipode 3, it should kill both of them. Now, if that wasn't enough to kill the head, the shell would have counterattacked on me right there. And a new upgrade for a robot. And this is another place you can avoid a fight. Just hug the left side the entire way. Because there's a fight right in the center. Hurt, but. Alright, I should have avoided it. And this side, you just pretty much keep hugging the left side, but after you get this chest. Brave Sword, that's an upgrade for a frog. And then you just keep hugging the left side. Nothing really here, except for this little bitty dot here. Opens up way to the progress up Death Peak. And same thing, you want to hug this wall. Come back around, come back around stay up top. Not trigger any fights. There's no hidden like areas or anything like that, so you're not gonna miss out. There's nothing treasure-wise. Hug the wall again to avoid the fight. I cannot remember if there's a fight anywhere around here or not. I guess we'll find out if we run into it. And this is the only save point around here, so if you need to heal up and save, do so now. Because we do run into lava spawn two more times. And something's gonna drop from the ceiling here. He doesn't move, just kinda walk around him. Star Scythe, that's a Magus upgrade. And we're just gonna do the same uh, pattern from before.
And if you if you didn't have Robo for Uzi Punch, you would use like Leap Leap Splash with the uh, with Frog in its place, or even Slurp Cut would have worked. Be careful, it's slippery, fall, and you have to start over. What it means by starting over, you're just gonna you're not gonna go too far back, so it's not a big deal if you do fall. And there's no enemies. And that's it for him. I didn't want to do that. Uh, the guys that were coming from the top, they randomly like, are generated, so you can't really, there's not really a pattern to follow. What you want to do look for is a gap between them, because if you find that gap, you could actually run between them all the way down. Like right there's the gap right there. I can't remember if there's any monsters there. It's been a long time since I played this. Push the shell. Climb the shell. Say that 20 times fast. Oh yeah, another lava spawn here, so heal up before you take him on. So like I said, he's always going to do that main attack that hurts everyone first. And this is the last time you fight this spawn, actually. Yeah, you kind of got got to know the game plan before you go into it, because once, because his shell keeps on doing the massive attack that hurts everyone, even if he if you don't hit it first. And once he gets one member down on your party, it's pretty much hard to recover from that. And the reason why his shell's there is because what that machine said: push the shell, climb the shell. And see this ladder, you can't reach it right now, but. And then you just press the active, the, the inspect button to climb it. I need to push it up higher. There you go. And now, oops, I saw it. Don't. And now this is, this is the summit of Death Peak. So, this is the summit of Death Peak. All who fear the night and stand against the darkness, please give us strength. Chrono. The pendant's reacting. It... it shattered. But, we've come so far. Don't be sad. It was silly to think we could get him back. Please answer me. Don't leave me. Chrono!
Chrono! The Chrono Trigger, the Guru's Time Egg. And there we all are. We're back at that instant. It appears that time has been suspended. We'll just, we'll just exchange the clone for Chrono. Chrono? It's Chrono! Chrono, you're alive! We've got to hurry. What a relief. Chrono, you're alright. Welcome back, Chrono. I'm so glad you're back. We... We knew this day would come. You mustn't. You can't do that ever again. While you are away, a lot of things happened. First we, and then, and after that we, but... Krona, are you li even listening? There's so much you have to know. So, looks like you were successful. No, don't thank me. I didn't do a thing, I just gave you a place to begin. If you really want to thank me, make me a member of your team. By the way, the Wings of Time have come looking for you. It seems to have a heart and mind of its own. You wish to fight Lavos, correct? Many paths lay open to you. You may use that bucket or fly the Wings of Time to the day of Lavos. Or, there's the Black Omen, which floats in the sky above your world. Lavos is somehow connected with it. It's up to you to decide when and where to fight Lavos. By now you realize you are the only ones who stand a chance against him. However, you will not be alone. I have vague glimpse of events, people and places that will empower you. In the Middle Ages, a woman's sheer determination brings a forest back to life. A fugitive in the Middle Ages, Ozzy maintains an evil hideout. There's a task to be done in the future where machinery originated. And there's a very special stone that can shine its light on each generation, from the distant past to the far future. There's a ghost of a lofty knight slain by Magus in the Middle Ages, who haunts the present. There's an object in the Middle Ages that sparkles like a rainbow. One of you is close to someone who needs help. Find this person, fast. Just as you test the lives of every life form you meet, so too will their energy strengthen you. Fail to live up to the potential and you will never win. I'm sorry that I sit, must simply witness the coming spectacle from my vant vantage point here. And that's going to be it, guys. As always, thanks for watching. Peace out, and I'll see y'all next time.